Happy Friday. I'm Gary, and this is another broadcast from The Power of Prudence. On Fridays at The Power of Prudence, we talk about subjects relating to your personal security and safety. Today, it's going to be a little bit different. I want to go back to a week ago. Uh, I was training a group of CEOs, and at the end of that, we had a Q&A discussion period. And a CEO asked me to address the group at what lessons could CEOs who these days are facing a lot of chaos and change in the financial structure, the legal issues, but business owners today have a lot of stressful um, decisions that they have to make. Special operations people and people operating undercover have, you know, if you've done a lot of combat time, you have um, received training and a lot of experience in making life or death decisions in situations where it is high stress, life threatening, or what we term as acute stress situations. So what are the lessons that we might take from the training that we've received and you know share with CEOs. So I gave an answer and um, talked about it in, in the courses and in the course I taught that day, I always teach a section on the physiology of fear. And I do that because it, it tries to show everyday people why under situations of acute stress uh, or when your life is threatened that people either react with the fight, flight, or freeze syndrome and kind of what differentiates that and how we might enhance our reactions uh, capitalizing on those, the pathways that, uh, you know, that work through our nerves and brain to uh, help us react to things. Um, but I want to talk to you today because several months ago, um, after teaching this, I became interested in doing more research to figure out not just how we react and the immediate actions I, I can prepare for, but more psychologically, what are the psychological uh, foundations of fear and fear responses and decision making and how might I incorporate that in training uh, to advise families on you know not only how to conduct their themselves but how to mentor their children so that we start bringing up uh, offspring that are capable of facing stressful situations and fear. You know, today, how many people have heard how many students in school claim to be suffering or are suffering from anxiety? Anxiety pervades our society now. And why? I, I believe one of the reasons is because we are not equipping people to deal with anxiety. You know, I think there's a, a huge pharma business now in selling people pills to try to take care of anxiety or a lot of office visits um, with counselors. And they, there's nothing wrong when that's needed, but it's become so pervasive. There must be ways that we can train our families to accept stress, accept higher levels of stress and anxiety, and still make use good judgment and decision making under those conditions. So today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the research that uh, I've been reading and how that might impact, and we'll relate it to CEOs and or business owners and families. So hey, let's dive in. You know, when I wanted to start doing this research, I came across the book Maps of Meaning by Jordan Peterson. And um, I really like the book because it not only in the sections that I'm 
focusing on now delves into the physio physiology of fear as you know I had done some research before but also the psychology of fear and how that works in in people and he leans heavily on research by Jung and Piaget uh, for his findings and you know I, I found it quite helpful so one of the things and, and I'm really going to summarize this a great deal and if you've ever listened to or read uh, a Jordan Peterson book you know that uh, you know it's it takes two or three times to read it and uh, or listen to it and looking at charts because the man thinks uh, on a way different plane than I do so you know yeah, I really have to boil down his uh, his concepts all of us walk around every day in our lives with some sort of plan or schema and how I set up and arrange my life my livelihood uh, and the way I interact with people and the world around me is based off where I think I am and how I view my circumstances and where I want to be and then I have a plan that is supposed to take me from the former to the latter or from point A to point B, right? That's how I'm running my life. And as I'm going about that and everything that happens during my day, at home, on the drive to work, at work, and coming back, if it if an occurrence happens that fits in with my plan to get from where I am to where I want to be, that's all good. It's order. We're comfortable. But sometimes, you know what happens? And things that happen that might impede or disrupt what I think is my plan to get from point A to point B. And that can be something simple. You know, uh, I think Peterson in his book um, gives an example of a guy on his way to a meeting um, several buildings away. You know, so he has a plan on when to leave and when to get there, what he's going to do at the meeting, and everything goes according to plan. So we have anomalies that pop up. Some of them are minor. For example, um, this guy leaves his office at the time that he planned, goes to the elevator, the elevator doesn't come, doesn't come, doesn't come, and he's waiting, waiting, and finally, because he's in a very tall office building, finally he decides, okay, I'll just take the stairs. So he's had a minor disruption. His plans are still in place. He can still achieve his goal of getting to the meeting on time without too much stress, he, he decides to take the stairs. Well, he goes on this, down the stairs, but what happens if he goes to the stairs and now the stairs are blocked? Well, now his problem of getting to the meeting on time and his plan are further disrupted. So, you know, it's ratcheting up the anxiety. And depending on how much valence that you put on getting to that meeting on time and um, what, you know, you hope to achieve from that meeting, it will be varying levels of anxiety based on how much you value the outcome. So in this story, the guy, you know, overcomes the issue of waiting on, on the elevator and getting to the stairs and he eventually gets out on the street. He's walking, he sees that he just got nervous. He's gonna make it in time, everything's going well. He's a block from where the building he's trying to get to and suddenly, you know, here's a big screech of tires and a thump and it sounds like, oh my God, you know, I might be getting ready to get run over. 
suddenly, you know, that guy's thoughts of the meeting and his plans all go away and it's now immediate survival. Oh, then it turns out that, you know, it was just a uh, big truck going over a big pothole and that noise. So he is able to continue on, on his quest to go to the meeting. So all this is used to describe minor um, abnormalities, um, something or, you know, things that pop up in our lives or in our day that cause inconvenience and cause us to shift the manner that we want to achieve. Like, you know, I, I'm going through my day. Well, I may have to shuffle my schedule. I mean, how many of you does that happen to that I have a schedule, I have plans, I, ha I wanna work out, I have my uh, reflection and, and worship time, everything figured in there. And then somehow, in the morning, things start happening, and uh, I'm having to shift, and I'm hoping that it's still my ultimate goals of the bigger things I have to do can stay on track, but it causes anxiety, and causes me to have to shift. And these can be things that are minor, but we have to get to where we can regulate what is minor and adapt to something minor and not have it put us in a heightened state of anxiety. Then on the other hand, there are major things. In uh, Peterson's book, the guy that he talks to goes to the meeting, um, you know, it's part of his plan to get ahead and get his promotion and move on with his career. And then, you know, he, he thinks he does well in the meeting and he comes back and the next day or Monday, that's like on a Friday maybe, and the, the Monday when he comes in, the boss says he wants to see him. And he comes in and wow, you know, the boss talks about how many complaints he got about how he conducted himself in the meeting and how it seems to be uh, habitual with him and how a lot of people don't like working with him. In the end, the guy gets fired. So now this is a major, right? A major uh, disruption to his plan. Now that everything he believes to be true about how he's regarded, who he is, the kind of work he has been doing um, is changed. Not only that, but now his goals that he had and his ways to achieve his plan to achieve those goals, that's gone. And now, you know, like this is where everything falls apart. No truths that you believed seem valuable anymore. So what do you do? And I think that, you know, that, that kind of goes, let's go, like, let's go back to if you're a business owner, right? These days, regulations change, um, the economy changes, thing, the changes are so fast, or, or let's take something like COVID mandates coming in, um, you know, we might suddenly get different ESG requirements put on us that can totally destroy your plans. I'm sure every business owner has a, you know, one year, three year and five year plan. Well, all those could be taken away quickly and everything you believed about your business and its applicability. I mean, imagine if you were somebody in the oil and gas business uh, over the last couple years, can really be shaken and have to be restructured from the ground up. So, you know, and I, I believe that when we're talking about a business, if it's a minor disruption or a minor anomaly, that 
managers can generally handle those, right? Because the plan hasn't changed and hopefully our managers are trained to the point that they can refigure the means to get from where we are to where we're going. Now, maybe they might have to, you know, reevaluate where they are to some extent, but it's not a major thing and the goal remains the same. But I believe it takes leaders or a leadership team to deal with major disruptions and major anomalies because now it's not just that the goals may have to be totally, the existing ones totally scrapped and new ones made, but the basic truths about who you are, who your business is, who your business serves, how your business serves them, all that may have to be refigured. And that's where it takes leadership because it's not only, you know, foreseeing and, and looking into the future, but it's also bringing your team around you and, you know, showing them that, hey, the truths that we believe about ourselves and where we wanted to go are no longer valid. And, but here, let's, here's where we are now based on the new information we have. And here's my vision for where we want to go. And, you know, if you're a leader, they're going to buy into that and they're going to be with you and go with you and you will recover from that decision or recover from the anomalies that force you to make new plans and, and new decisions. So let's go back. That's a little bit about how um, chaos works. You know, whenever our, a, a living being's natural instinct, anytime there's any sort of anomaly to, to any plan, it, it is fear. And that's natural. And again, we have learned ways to counteract that fear, but depending on what the anomaly is, how much, how much we value what it interrupts. Like, I, let's be honest, there's, I'm one of those people that, hey, I like chaos. As a matter of fact, I don't do too well in uh, times of order, but maybe I like chaos because there's less rules and uh, I'm held less accountable, but that's another story. But some people deal with chaos well. There are other people who are more rigid and who in those people that any disruption of their plans, and that I've seen that where it could be, hey, the way things are arranged in a house, uh, how about the person that immediately flies into rage when they're on the road and they feel somebody impedes their, their way, even if it's only for a moment, how they react. And I'm not saying that because you do one, you do the other, but those, we all have dip, different temperaments um, in reacting to ab anomalies or things that impede on our plan or our sense of order. So again, let's, let's go back to the original question I was asked by the CEOs about what lessons that I, I might offer from my experience and my training. First, and uh, the first is a personal thing. I, you know, I've been in situations, I've been uh, divorced twice. <laughs> you know, I've had uh, wives leave me and take my kids and go and, uh, and take everything. <laughs> and so every truth I believed about myself and about my uh, worth and my plans, um, I saw it melt. Hey, I was once fired from a job uh, in the military uh, after a disagreement with somebody, and um, you know that everything I lived for or at the time and based my self worth on that disappeared. So I've had times where I've had these major disruptions, and. 
you know, when everything, your foundation that you're standing on of who you think you are and uh, your value in the world, your place in the world, when that crumbles, um, you know, I personally believe that it is your religious faith that can withstand it all. And, you know, yes, I, I'm a Christian, but there are, are other faiths. You have to have some, I, I believe it's essential to have some belief in something greater than us, greater than me, something omnipresent, omniscient. Um, I believe, you know, in, in a God that oversees everything, that there is something beyond what I can fathom, by beyond what I can muster. And, uh, you know, I, I won't go further into how being a Christian, I think, furthers that. But I, I guess, you know, again, the basic thing that I would say that helps equip anyone to deal with a major disruption is faith in a greater being or God. The second is practiced in being in practice in being in situations that are uncomfortable. In your training and in, in the training I've had, you're put in stressful situations, physically um, stressful, no sleep, long marches, tired, cold, um, wet. Um, then you're put under mental stress. So, you, and then you're required to make decisions. So experiencing, experiencing discomfort, anxiety, um, like in scuba school, some of the things that they do to you uh, to overcome the instincts that wanna take over when you're near drowning. Um, for those of us that went to school back when they had crossovers and um, bobbing, that, those were, <laughs> Uh, some of the uh, exercises that we did to let us feel like we we're going to drown and the waves of fear come over you and then you have to keep functioning in order to save yourself. But if we train, if we put people, our families, our kids in situations where they experience anxiety and maybe in a somewhat controlled environment where you know, we have their backs if it becomes life-threatening, but that they have to make decisions. And, and I think maybe even some sports uh, involve that. Um, but that helps equip you to experience anxiety uh, and stress and still make decisions. I believe that uh, being outside is one of the key components of that. When you need to A, learn your physical abilities. And, and this kind of relates back to if we're talking about uh, potential uh, violence or a life-threatening emergency like a earthquake or fire. But a kid should learn what their physical capabilities are. Here's what I can climb on and here's what I can't. Um, here's how far I can jump. Well, I can jump over this creek I jump this way, but I can't do this. Um, that way, you know, it gives you a, a confidence and a certainty and knowledge about what you can and can't do. Being outside also gives you experience at making decisions about what path I'm going to take. And yes, you are subject. Do I jump off this rock or from this log to that log? You can twist an ankle, you can break a leg, you can get scraped. You know, when I climb in this tree, can I jump over to the next? Those are, are situations that train our kids to start making decisions. And, you know, yes, that can result in injury or not. And yes, are they gonna get bruised sometime? Might you get a sprained ankle? Hey, could you possibly get a broken bone? Yes, but 
I feel those mishaps and those um, injuries are worth the experience that it gives so that if it's a life-threatening situation that they are, they are capable of handling it. I believe it's worth it just for given the level of anxiety that we see with youth today at helping alleviate that anxiety to give them confidence that there's something. You know, I, I, I think, you know, Kimberly is uh, a teacher and she talks to me about the kids. She teaches advanced classes, how many of them are going through anxiety. And a lot of those are the kids that are in a class or on a device all the time pushing for what is deemed to be the way to get ahead in today's world and they're not experiencing things other than academic stress pressure stress um, and I feel that a lot of them are unequipped by their life experience to that point to deal with with stress so hey we, we talked about um, learning your physical limits and having to make, you know, put your kids in environments to make them have to make decisions under stress. You know, even as your child moves towards adolescence and they're not under that protective dome of the parents, telling them who's good and who's bad, what's right and what's wrong and how to guide and helping them make the decisions. When they start venturing out on their own with friends, there's going to be times where they have disagreements. There's going to be times where a disagreement starts to escalate. And there are dangers when it escalates, uh, dangers of a fight, dangers of somebody um, these days using a weapon. But they need to learn how to navigate those waters because in life, we're all going to have to navigate it sooner or later. So I, you know, I've talked, you know, kind of got more talking into about personal, uh, how, how anomalies, stress, chaos uh, affect us personally. But let's go back to a business owner. I believe that as a business owner, your best way to be prepared to make decisions under um, stressful situations and under um, disruptions, major and minor, is first to be equipped yourself. And we've talked about the ways that you can equip yourself, but you have to have confidence in yourself. Yes, I believe that you also need a confidence in a God um, and in yourself. And in, like for me, it's family that if suddenly my business were taken away, I know that my family loves me and supports me and that gives me that level of not everything in my life has been taken away or gone. I have a reason to keep going. You went into business for a reason. You have business reasons, you have personal reasons. And when a major disruption happens and the foundation that you and your business are standing on crumbles, well, let me go back to when the foundation your business stands on crumbles, you still have who you are. You still have what you believe in. I hope you believe in something. And you still have the love of your family that can buoy you and support you while you refigure everything anew from, uh, from the business standpoint and rebuild. Hey, you know, uh, having your life, um, the, the rug from underneath your life pulled a few times as I have, teaches me that there's always, no matter how it feels, there's always a horizon and there's always hope. Hey, sometimes it even serves as an opportunity. And 
I'm grateful myself for the things that I have been through because those things have made me who I am today. And hey, I'm, I'm just happy to keep moving down this path towards you know whatever the end of it is and and engage people and engage life hey it's a beautiful ride enjoy it hey again i'm gary this has been the power of prudence friday wrap and you know we talk about personal security and safety we may have uh, gone a little bit off track today but i hope you found the information I talked about useful and if you did please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow and like us on the various social media. Thanks.